An idea that I'm really passionate about is that the quality of your work is determined by the quality of your process. It's not determined by your talents. It's not determined by your tastes. It's not determined by your clients. Those things feed into it, but the overall baseline quality of your work is a direct reflection of the overall quality of the process that you employ. And that furthermore, if your work is inconsistent in quality, sometimes it seems like you got it, sometimes it didn't work, sometimes uh, maybe you've created a block, sometimes you don't, sometimes you um, have to fall back on a style or you have to steal from something. All of that stuff is the reflection of the fact that you either you don't have a process, you're being very reactive and doing a different thing every time. So sometimes you happen to be doing the right thing, therefore you get the good work, and then sometimes you're doing the wrong things or a bad process and you're getting the bad work. So you don't actually, in that instance, you don't have a process. You have a million processes that you have no idea which ones work and which ones don't work. It's very likely that you don't have a theory about how the work comes together. Because if you had a theory, then you could test it through the processes. All of that to say that, um, that my firm belief is good process will equal good work. And consistently, regardless of subject matter, energy level, client, context, etc. Now, one of the things is that people love to tell you that creativity is messy and creativity is hard and um, it, it's a mystery and all of this stuff. So the idea of then having very clearly defined steps that you take in order to define something, in order to do creative work, is seen as, uh, I don't know, anathema to creativity. What I find is that the more clearly I define those steps, the better the work gets, the more creative the work gets. And I don't even worry about the outcome. I just follow the steps and I assume that they generate good quality creative work. So I want to talk about, from my perspective, the benefits that I get from using systems to design things over uh, intuition, reactiveness, randomly defining a, um, a plan. In my hope to argue that you should investigate developing methods for designing things, developing methods for making stuff. So the first one, your work will be more original. Now, I don't mean that it will be more original, that you will suddenly be a groundbreaking conceptual or formalist designer because you may not be a formalist at heart. A formalist being that someone who comes up with inventive visual expressions. You may also not be much of a conceptual designer, but I mean original in that one of the things a system can do is actually help to stamp out the urge or desire to copy existing things. Now, it doesn't mean that you might not have a reference to something. And there's a wide variety of reasons why you might have a reference to a style or an artist or a historical period or whatever, but that a good system makes it very difficult to maintain a stylistic approach. Now, it's possible, for example, that you have a system that's only about the conceptual part of it, and then you apply a style to it. But one of the reasons that I employ systems is that I think they help break me out of styles. They help me get to places that are unpredictable. My tastes and my influences will still show up, but uh, what's a good example? The recent package, CD package that we did for this record called Gradient Expansion has got kind of a 70s psychedelic trippy photo effect going on. That effect might not necessarily be 
original. But what I know is that I wasn't trying to copy anything. There was a visual effect that seemed relevant and it was one of many things that I investigated. Now, one of the things is it's definitely original to me in that I don't go around thinking, oh, I should make something that does that. I've never encountered the urge or desire to explore that in any other project. If you saw all the outtakes from that project as well, you would see stuff that is wildly different from that. Um, that to me speaks to the strength of the process and then the client reacts to something that they want to do. So for me, the idea of doing things that are original, it's not so much that no one can ever have done it before. It's that I don't want to do the kind of things I used to do, which is that I wanted to work in a style, I was looking for excuses to work in a style, or when shit didn't work out, I fell back onto a style. Uh, I'm fine with a style, but I want it to emerge throughout the process in a way that feels natural. Like, like the road just winded that way and it was a good place to go. Um, furthermore though, you can use systems like a bed no diagram as a way to purposefully explore multiple styles. So you could use a system to generate a concept, which is like a, what is a concept? A concept is like a, a language-based way of, of expressing something, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it. But then I could say like, I could have a concept and then I could come up with a list of potential styles that do or do not make sense to apply to that concept. Then all of a sudden, maybe I still end up doing my kind of uh, retro-modernist Helvetica thing, but maybe I'm also looking at a bunch of stuff, this huge spectrum of things, and maybe that offers room for mutation so that when I decide to rip off uh, you know, the, the like gridded purple and black uh, Euro style thing that the kids are doing. And maybe when I see that and I see the versions I've done in four other styles, that all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, what about this and this? And it opens up the potential for these kind of mutations or that you can take, you can have bed no diagrams with these, these different aspects of composition, typography and layout and you could use the system solely to find a unique visual approach to put on top of a verbal concept. I personally have always been kind of like a thinker. Like, like I've always had kind of heady concepts for stuff, but I was always limited by the kind of ideas that I could come up with. So if I were to look at some classic, iconic piece of graphic design, I couldn't relate to how, say, a, um, it's an example of like a classic designer, but who's actually, I actually like. Chairman F and Geismar. So they, you know, they made all those incredible logos and they probably still make incredible logos. And they, they always take like very iconic ideas. I think they're, they're bicentennial, they did a bicentennial stamp and it's a star that's made up of red, white, and blue stripes. It's such a simple idea, but it encapsulates everything, right? When I saw stuff like that, I couldn't understand what kind of mind could produce something that focused and that iconic. And that's how I viewed stuff like that forever. Though, like, there's an example I use in classes all the time, which is this old Stefan Sagmeister poster from like the early thousands for an Adobe Design Achievement Award. And so it's an award for students. And the poster is two really simple ideas. It's a trophy that is made up of cups of coffee, like pixels. <clears throat> Super simple idea, right? It's for art students. They're fueled by coffee and it's for an award. So a trophy and then furthermore you could argue that it's for Adobe and it's digital so therefore pixels and then the execution of it is beautiful because it's an overhead large format shot of 
actual coffee cups and one of his assistants pouring and mixing the coffee with cream to get a like half tone effect. So there's a lot there to unpack, but the basic up, gist of it is coffee plus trophy. Now again, to me, that's like kind of a mind-blowingly simple idea that I never had an idea like that. Like the entire time I was in school, I did not have an idea like that. To this day, I have not, actually that's not true. Now I have ideas like that. But up until a couple of years ago, I never had an idea like that and never, I just couldn't understand it. What I realize now is that regardless of how someone like Stefan Sagmeister or Paul Rand or somebody else comes up with a simple, bold, iconic, clear idea, maybe for them it's a flash of insight. And you know, like someone like George Lois with those Esquire covers, he seems to describe it like this intense, hard flash of genius. I realize that it's a system. Or if I wanted to do that, it's a system. Bed no diagrams. If you don't know what bed no diagrams are, I will have to make a video about it. You can Google bed no diagrams. You'll get the video I made about it already. But basically the idea is you make a grid and in one axis you have one visual or verbal, verbal concept and another access you have another. So if you're trying to make the Adobe Design Achievement Awards, the process is ungodly simple. You make a list, so you go awards and you make a list of all the ways you can visualize awards and you make a list about students or college or whatever, just make all these lists. And then you find the most relevant ideas and then you mash them up. So you have, might have this grid and along the top, you might have all the stuff that to you is like iconic to art school. So coffee, drugs, paint stains, brushes, whatever. And then along the other one, you're gonna have the stuff that signifies awards maybe. Trophy, giant check, I don't know, a bunch of other stuff, right? I'm not really doing this right now. And on that grid, you then go through and you just match them up. So eventually you would get to coffee and award. And then you do a Google image search for all the ways that coffee is visualized. And you do another one for all the way awards are visualized. And then you'd start sketching combinations. And furthermore, you may see a picture of six cups of coffee with different color values, realize they look like pixels and go, oh my God, what if we make the award out of coffee-like pixels? And then you could push that further and you could be like, cool, is it like a watercolor painting or is it like a photograph of them? And all of a sudden, you are Stefan Sagmeister level genius. That's a system. That's, that's how it works and that's why I harp on it. Because it can bridge the gap between the way your brain naturally comes up with ideas and things that you aspire to but I assume are completely out of your realm of possibility. The last thing that I would say that systems do is they reduce stress. So if you think about, if you start a project and you know that one, you could potentially do it in a number of processes, depending on the timeline, you can actually do a number of processes. If you have six months to do a project, you can actually work through multiple methodologies. But that's, that's a lot of confidence right there. But if you go through it and you go, oh cool, I've got this method and this method. So if I back up to one of my own examples, I just had students designing a film festival. And for the ideation phase of it, there were two separate two week methods. One of them is a more intuitive, but still was based on research analysis and then trying to find insights about the content that they could then draw a concept out of. That's a system, it's a harder system to work, but it's a system nonetheless if you respect it. Then the other one was the more simplistic Bedno diagram system. Some students got great results out of both some students, the insights shit is too hard for them and the bed no diagrams is fantastic. Other people got this really nice mix. 
it just depends. But what ends up happening is like within a short period of time, because like I say two weeks each, but that's because we meet once a week. If we work together in a building, we could have done one of those in a week and the other one in two days. They go through that, right? Now they know that there are multiple ways to generate ideas. One is intuitive, one is more systemic. And then you go into all projects and you know that there are systems that guarantee results as long as you chill out and run with the systems. This is why I use systems. The other thing is I find it fun. There's a gamification factor to it as well that I really like. Like I like the idea that if I do these steps, I should get to an end point that I wasn't expecting to get to. The thing that I see is that a lot of what we describe as being creative actually sucks. Not knowing if you're gonna have an idea and being stressed out about it and thinking really fucking hard about it and going for walks and going to the museum and bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. That stuff, that's not fun. That's not the good, the good part of the creative process is when an idea plops in front of you and it feels like a gift from the universe. That's what I find. Like my favorite thing in all creative endeavors is to almost feel like I didn't do anything. Like the shit just showed up. And to me, that's what the systems do. And that's why it's so cool. One of the things I look forward to that we haven't gotten into yet is doing something like the producer method or the typographer method, I can bring my friends in to work with me in a way that doesn't require us to do the form of compromise where we're both, I mean the form of collaboration, where we're both compromising, but sort of disappointed, or both frustrated that we're not seeing our vision come through or trying to get the other to that side. Because it's like the 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 collaboration where magically we both end up on the same page, I feel like that's kind of rare. But if we reduce it to tasks, fun tasks, what are we doing? Well, we have to find some visual element to try to figure out how to make like a typographic anchor from. The date, the name, maybe a headline, maybe initials, whatever, maybe the city. We gotta just take that one piece and do like, a hundred versions before the end of the day. That's fun. Like I can bring my friends in and in that instance, they're gonna generate a bunch of stuff. If I don't use any of it, fine. If I use all of it, fine. But it's fun, it's like a fun way to spend the day. Um, and, it, and it's like all of a sudden that that's gonna make it like even more surprising at the end. And like that's one of the things I'm looking forward to which is like the system, because it's about tasks and steps, I don't have to do the steps or I can do them with people. You know, I could start a project with 10 of my friends and then to, as I get towards the end, narrow it down to where like they helped me generate stuff, but it's my job to put it together. Or we could just keep making stuff together and just generate tons of material uh, in a way that I can't see how I would have done that earlier. I can't see how I would do that in a normal design environment. Those are my thoughts on why systems are so helpful and why they've radically changed my creative work and why I'm happy for it and I don't procrastinate anymore. And I used to, um, but I, I don't procrastinate because the system gives me confidence and just gets rid of any fear I have. And the system is made up of steps that are fun. So it's a win-win. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your experience with systems. If you want some follow-up into like, okay, dude, you're talking about the systems. Can you be like a little bit more specific? I can do that. Take it easy.